Hi everyone, my name is Lori Beth and welcome to episode number 19 of Exploring Genuine Transformation. Um, we are almost in our sixth month of this show going on and this is a show where I am interviewing all sorts of um, coaches, healers, and teachers in the realm of transformation. And this show is really about transformation for the sake of having more of yourself, um, feeling more intimacy with life, more beingness, <clears throat> more freedom, um, as contrasted to transformation for the sake of getting what you want in life. And so there's been incredible, um, an incredible range of people um, talking about different topics on the show. And today I have the great honor of interviewing um, feminine spiritual teacher uh, and tantric poet, Maya Luna. So I'm gonna um, add her and then we'll introduce her more. So let's see. I'll just take a moment. <laughs> Yay, it worked. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey. Hmm. We're side by side. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Hi. So uh, I just want to take a moment to introduce Maya um, mm -hmm. for all of our viewers. Uh, so um, most of you probably know Maya from her beautiful and epic tantric poetry um, that, uh, you know, that she writes about and posts here, obviously, quite a bit. And she's also a, uh, like I said, a feminine spiritual leader and um, has created the Deep Feminine Mystery School. I'm getting that right, right, the name? Yep. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, which some of you who are watching might be a part of right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, I mean, I think that in, in so many ways, your poetry and your teachings really speak for themselves. Um, I personally have experienced um, watching you some and your poetry as a transmission. And so mm -hmm. I imagine that that will come through in the show. So in some ways I have very little to say. <laughs> <laughs> We've already said it all. No, it's beautiful that you say that, you know, because I, Poetry is a very feminine way of communicating, and in mm -hmm. many ways it says what um, logic and the words and talking can't say. You know, it reaches into those mm -hmm. spaces that are unnameable. It reaches into that, um, mm -hmm. yeah, the heart that's underneath the words. Yeah. And um, it's very beautiful, and it's a very real aspect of the feminine, this quality of the liminal spaces mm. where it's you can't quite point directly at it you can't quite fully grasp it with that beautiful capacity that we have for logic and reason and knowledge um, mm -hmm. doesn't quite touch mm -hmm. um, the liminal or mm -hmm. you know what I would call the deep feminine mm -hmm. but poetry can mm -hmm. so I love that you started out that way mm -hmm. because yeah, we're probably going to talk about similar things, but in a different way. <laughs> when you say we're going to talk about similar things, meaning that we're going to, like, what might come through might be like the poetry, like, kind of yeah. in those liminal spaces. Um, and I mean, I could just do an oration in <laughs> surreal, you know, poetic, yeah. <laughs> but I'm guessing we're going to be a little bit more... Um, yeah 
touching into like what do these things really mean and what's really yeah what is it really about mm -hmm. yeah 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 my sense is that well we'll see how it unfolds but that will probably be playing in both realms um hmm. you know. um really. yeah so yeah. i want to just say that the topic which we've already addressed some today is the rad radical truth of feminine power and so that's what we're going to be exploring um, with Maya. And that's really her body of work. Um, you know, it's like, yeah. what does it actually, you know, we have all these concepts and ideas about what power is. And what is, what is power when we're truly tapping into the feminine? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> it's really exciting. And it involves confronting a lot of, um, false ideas and false concepts which is also really yeah. exciting to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, cool well yeah. um i'm interested in your personal story but i'm also feeling like a little bit of a pull just to start where you just started because i and so i think we'll just we'll flow and we'll see where some of your personal story kind of comes into that Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I think that Ooh, I'm getting hot and excited. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> and feel, you can feel the energy beginning. Um, yeah. So if I could, if I could try to put it in like a succinct way, I would say that um, we have a habit on planet Earth of um, twisting up and out and away into our heads, into doing into knowing mm -hmm. and um, keeping ourselves far away from what I call the deep. Mm -hmm. And the deep is a place that all of our souls deeply yearn for because it's like coming home. And it's a little bit hard to describe the experience of opening and surrendering into the deep, but it is, you know, in Tantra, right? Mm. The whole idea is that the divine is kissing density, mm. that the divine, the beloved is not, you know, out there. It's literally in the viscera, in the, in the density of form in every moment. Mm. And um, mm. it's, it's always fascinating to me to feel how, how much people yearn for this experience of this place of what I call the deep um, but how much programming there is to mm -hmm. kind of stay away mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so the feminine is really learning how to drop how to surrender how to open mm -hmm. how to let go into that current which we might call like the wheel of arrows mm -hmm. you know this this way that our reality is is made up of this kind of passionate energy mm. and this yearning that we have to contact that passionate energy and be in contact with something greater than us, you know? Um, mm. This mm -hmm. kind of love making. Everyone yearns. I mean, this is my theory, just mm -hmm. in my own personal experience and in people I've worked with. What people want from sex is the same thing they want from life, from yep. their moment-to-moment -moment experience. And it's not about having a great orgasm. It's about contact. They, mm -hmm. People want and yearn for this experience of deep contact in their soul, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, the interesting thing is that this, this experience of what I call contacting the deep feminine is totally accessible and there's actually ways to drop into it. Um, so it's not just a conceptual, like theoretical thing. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's like, it's right here. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to become anything. You just have to kind of undo and you're there. Mm -hmm. And so just, Beautiful. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling <laughs> everything that you're saying. Do I sound like a weird? <laughs> no, not at all. I can't tell. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm, okay. like, I'm right there with you. And actually, I really, um, yeah, I like, I, I was really, when you said, um, the divine 
kissing density. I was just like, oh yes, like that's yeah. that experience of um, like I don't always use those words to talk mm. about kind of like touching into the core, but you know I personally yeah. do a lot of somatic work and or just like I experience that through the body and through the totally. beingness. But there's something about those words that's just like, and I think this is such a part of your magic and what you bring is that it's like those words that can directly put us into contact with that direct experience. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The feminine really is about direct experience. It's about bringing that thing up close where we can actually see it and taste it, yeah. not through ascending and going out, but by sinking down and in. Yeah. And then it's right, it's right there. You know, it's right here. Yeah. And it always has been and it always will be. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, actually, that this was, that I said we were going to flow between like this direct experience and this sort of uh -huh. conceptual. But you know, there's, mm. I think, so when I know that different people talk about contacting the, we can say in this case, the deep feminine, and right. feminine being different than female, you know, or masculine uh -huh. being different than man, you know, like yep. men. So I'm wondering if you can speak to that as we get into this conversation. Like, I know you're working with women, so, mm -hmm. and you're helping them to kind of access Right now. That. Yeah, how mm -hmm. do you see the kind of um, interplay between, um, you know, these kind of, this kind of inner union or this inner experience versus like, yeah. Uh, you know, sort of what it is to be a man or a woman um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah, connect. So first of all, I'll clarify that to me, the deep feminine is not um, something we can do. Again, it's, it's what we might call the goddess. It's the divine in density. Mm -hmm. it's, it's God source creator, the beloved that's here in this messy world of form that we contact through. This is the essence of Tantra, really, that we contact that one mm -hmm. through our body, through our senses, through our heart, mm -hmm. um, not, not by indulging in hedonism, by through, but through the yoga of being exquisitely present and awake and alive in our passion. Mm -hmm. That's how we contact that one. Mm -hmm. um, in my understanding, the contact with that place happens through a very feminine process of surrendering and opening, mm -hmm. which, yes, both men and women have access to. Um, <clears throat> I think it was Osho that said, um, very controversial being Osho, but I like this one quote. It was like, it's... Um, to know God, one has to become feminine mm -hmm. because we have yeah. to be able to receive. And again, receiving is not a concept or an idea. It's literally an experience in our own body and being. Mm -hmm. You know, in the course that I'm doing right now, which is for women, because I do believe that there is something unique about woman's body that, um, has maybe more intuitive access to this. Um, but a lot of the women, as we're going through this course, and there's 109 of them, a lot of them are saying the same thing, which is like, there, it, it's sort of like, what is this something? Like, I feel this something coming into me. I feel this beautiful, exquisite something. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like it's that. There's no word for it. There's no name for it. But it only happens when we surrender and drop and receive. Mm -hmm. That's the only time it really mm -hmm. comes in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a real way, not in a way from our heads, but from our body and our heart, you know? Yeah. Um, and so this is why, you know, the radical truth of feminine power. So we might, we might say... First of all, I don't pretend to be an expert on the masculine. Mm -hmm. um, I leave that to people that are doing that. But we might say that masculine power is about innovation and knowing, right? It's philosophy, it's logic, it's point A to point B. It's, it's um, yeah, innovation, like mm -hmm. going out from here to there. 
through this process of discernment and skillfulness and knowing. The feminine is really the opposite process. It's a, it's a settling back and down and in and letting go into not knowing. And this is where we get to receive this unnameable something mm. that's right here waiting to be tasted and known. Mm. It's also the place where wisdom comes from. I mean, this is, this is where my poetry comes from. You know, mm. it's this exquisite not knowing knowing, mm. right? Crazy wisdom, intuition. That process happens through a process of surrender and opening and letting go. Um, mm -hmm. Dropping lower than the head, mm -hmm. lower than the surface. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Neither one is better than the other, it's just different, you know? Mm -hmm. And would you say then that like sort of in your understanding that, I mean, there's a kind of union that can happen of the two, oh, yeah. you know, like this sort of internally, right? Yeah. Then allows for, um, you know, some different way of being like you kind of like the surrender happened, the surrender receptivity. Um, you haven't talked yes. about groundlessness yet, but. I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, but that happens through the kind of that contact with the deep feminine and then the kind of discernment innovation, you know, can like that can then be birthed totally. in a different sort of way in the world. Um, yeah. Yes. That has been something that has organically happened over time for me. Mm. But it's it's sweet to hear you talk about that because I remember a time when I did feel like it was two different worlds I was living, you know, or like I had my experience of going out in a world and doing things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I had my experience of coming home and dropping in and being in my nest mm -hmm. and doing my whole feminine thing. Mm -hmm. And the blending is quite profound because again, the, the feminine capacity to surrender, open, receive, drop down <clears throat> puts us into contact with, like I said, the divine in density, the place where the beloved is kissing form. Mm -hmm. But it's also our own soul. Mm -hmm. So many of the women in the course keep saying, like, oh, my God, I feel like I'm coming home to myself. Mm -hmm. Again, in this unnameable, unspeakable way that's quite mm -hmm. magical and is quite a mystery. It's not spirit, it's not higher self, it's, I don't know how else to say it, but soul, mm -hmm. right? Who I am in the deep, um, mm -hmm. where I'm me, but I'm also at one with something greater. Mm -hmm. And so when that place is contacted and then our doing comes from mm -hmm. that place, wow, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. what a beautiful thing, right? In this world that has lost so mm -hmm. much soul, that has lost mm -hmm. contact with the soul. Mm -hmm. Um and in that, I'm in that regard. Is would you like? Is your work about you're focusing really on the deep feminine because that has been so lost. Like that's the place yes. that. And you're saying it is different potentially for women than with men. And you've also you also work with men, you know, in other yeah. in other capacities and other times. But that actually you're focusing on that because there's like we are we we've are. lost touch yeah we've lost touch with that particular current of reality mm -hmm. um, we've lost okay. touch with mm -hmm. the the yoga or the practice of dropping and settling down and mm -hmm. into that current mm -hmm. um we're a very up 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 um mm -hmm. in our um in our mm -hmm. values in our mm -hmm. embodiment in our perception of reality um, we lean forward, right? It's, mm -hmm. That's just, that's, mm -hmm. that's the conditioning mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And, so that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it also strikes me that we can, it can be easy to, this is why, partly why I asked the question about kind of masculine and feminine versus men and women to be like, yeah, you know, there can be a lot of outward kind of like, okay, I'm going to, become I'm going to get in union with a man and then I will cultivate that in that relationship which is one right. way to cultivate it and it sounds like your right. work is about how do you cultivate that inside of yourself in all areas of life 
you know. Totally. Yeah. And there's also this interesting thing, which is like, we have all these like kind of silly, distorted, gender filled Mm -hmm. ideas about masculine and feminine. Mm -hmm. One of them is like, you know, the feminine is like vulnerable and feeling and sensitive. And so for a man to get in touch with his feminine, he needs to like get vulnerable and sensitive and feeling and and then there's this, like, whole other group of people that are, like, no, we need more, like, masculinity and penetrative energy and men have gotten too soft and, like, the sensitive new age guy thing. And this is really not about any of that. Mm-hmm. This is about our capacity to open and receive through our bodies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because something happens in that process mm-hmm. of dropping low mm-hmm. and opening. We make contact with something mm. very, very, very nourishing and deep and precious. Mm. And all human beings need that, mm. in my experience. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There's also this quality of the deep feminine, which um, it really is like surrendering into the holding ground of love. So part of our, this movement is this way that we've kind of conditioned ourselves to feel like uh, we have to like make everything happen. Like we're literally holding reality up. We're making reality happen. And um, I think we yearn for this experience of trust of trust in reality, not, not again from the head or a concept of like, oh, I'm going to mm-hmm. trust everything's going to go my way, but mm-hmm. to be able to settle and feel held mm-hmm. by something greater than ourselves. And okay. um, that happens with the deep feminine. And mm-hmm. as I'm experiencing, um, when I'm, as I'm offering this transmission to these women in my course, it's a tender process of trusting mm-hmm. and it's built over time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's not one movement mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know it's like a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more mm-hmm. um, and I was sharing this with them recently that what I've found as I've tracked my own process of dropping into this current and trusting it is that um, I need to plan less and less Mm-hmm. because I, I have more faith and trust that I can show up not knowing mm-hmm. open receptive and that I'm going to receive what I need what I need to say what I need to do how I need to act in the moment Mm-hmm. So in, in, in many ways, again, it's almost like the reel of Eros. Mm-hmm. Eros being this way that we are alive living beings and life is this live, pulsing, messy, dripping viscera, right? It's And, and there's a way we kind of try to live above that to keep mm-hmm. it under control. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we really want to need it. We really want to just like mm-hmm. hang out in it. But it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit vulnerable at first. Mm-hmm. But there's a power in being willing to be there. Mm-hmm. And it is, again, like the analogy of lovemaking is just so on point I think because the best sex that we've ever had is always where we stopped trying to make something happen mm-hmm. and we let love happen through us mm-hmm. you know we we're willing to drop and open and receive mm-hmm. and be in the in the true moment as it's arising and follow mm-hmm. it and meet it right it's like we don't know how to make love we don't know it's not mm-hmm. we're not doing a technique but the bodies know, the current knows, mm-hmm. you know, and, and when we let it take us, my God, that's, that's the kind of lovemaking we all long for. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I think that's how we long to be in the world too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I love, there's so many pieces of what you're saying that are just resonant and really beautiful. Um, yeah. I, I think I'm, well, one, you know, and this is the, this is our uh, subject today, but just that you're speaking of this power because it's this power. What I'm hearing is that it's, it's this, like the deep feminine is this power because there's a deeper trust in life and Mm. there's a deeper trust into that, like not knowing and into the body and into like a, a sense of even like groundlessness, you know, that life can just be doing its thing and you can be making love to life. And so, yeah. that, you know, there's not like, it's not this power that I think we think about like, Oh, I want to do this thing. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to exert right. all the force. It's like, right. It's this true power of, I can be with anything that like, I, not only can I be with anything that comes up, but it can actually be ecstasy. Like it can actually be a sense of bliss, whether it's right. like, you know, the most, what we think of as the most challenging emotional state, you know, or yeah. the most like bliss, you know, actual, let, let's say like blissful lovemaking, you know, that all yeah. of it can be that, that kiss. Um, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, beautifully said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that I think that the the secret that the feminine knows is that power doesn't belong to us. It's not our mm-hmm. it's not ours to claim. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a it's a current in reality. In tantra, they might call it the fanda. The mm-hmm. fanda is like the mm-hmm. the orgasm that's happening in every cell and every particle. Mm-hmm. It's the sacred vibration, mm-hmm. right? It's just life in this dynamic, you know. Um, sacred energy right Mm -hmm. and um, and we have the capacity in our body and being to surrender and open to it Mm -hmm. right but it doesn't belong to us Mm -hmm. it's not ours to claim it's not something we can possess or like get more of or hold on to Mm -hmm. you know it's something that we receive we can receive in and offer Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well and then that also strikes me that that has to do with I mean this beautiful again this beautiful power of like like you said like not needing to hold on to life not needing it to be a certain way you know not it's like not like oh I'm powerful because I could overcome this thing but more like I'm powerful because I can actually be with the energy of the universe as it's yes. kind of happening. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And, you know, you mentioned groundlessness. Um, that's a big part of feminine spirituality, which is um, the fact of our absolute vulnerability in the face of existence, you know? Mm-hmm that um, it, it's interesting because the polarities always are a paradox. It's like each side is opposite and each side is totally true, <laughs> but they're opposite to each other, right? So yes, there's a truth in the fact that we have the power to act. We have the power of skillful action. We have the power to create, right? And at the same time, it's also true that reality is a wild, churning, groundless impermanence Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we, she's like our dom. (laughs) We are not, (laughs) Mm -hmm. we are not in full control. And the fact of that vulnerability and the submission to that vulnerability Mm -hmm. um, is a kind of radical power because it means that we are, we're free to become more supple with what is, because we, mm-hmm. we know that mm-hmm. we can't clench and get it how we want it. And there's a sweetness and, on, oh, and a aliveness yeah. in um, being willing to face yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being willing to face that. Um, oh, I can feel it in my heart, but it's just like the preciousness. Mm-hmm. And the preciousness of how, um, I mean, right now in California, I don't know, where are you? Are you in California? No, I'm in Washington. Oh, okay. Two hours north from here, there's mm-hmm. a fire that's just mm-hmm. clearing out, you know, mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of acres. Like, people's yeah. homes yeah, yeah. are going up in flames. So what better metaphor than that, right? Mm-hmm. Anything could happen at any time, and yeah. that's the truth. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we open to that, it brings us into this exquisite intimacy, I think, with reality. We're no longer kind of, um, I mean, everything that I teach in the Deep Feminine Mystery School and really the essence of Tantra is like, how do we stop living on autopilot? Yeah. And looking at our life and objectifying it and objectifying the moment and keeping it at a distance and just bring it up close. Mm -hmm. Like you said, make love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I mean, oh, so beautiful. (laughs) Ah, life reality. Ah! Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Mm. Mm. And the thing that's wild is that it's always here. Yeah. You don't have to do anything to get it. If anything, you have to undo a couple yeah. of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, but it's always right here. And, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I mean, you were, you, were, you were kind of like inquiring about my past. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. I think that that for me, I just have always had this hunger for the beloved, for like an an experience of being alive that um, was infused with meaning and depth and something something more than um, I think what we are sold life is supposed to be about. Yeah. And through my journey into Tantra and into the feminine, I have cultivated just like these little technologies that mm-hmm. are like little doorways in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that you have as well in your somatic work, right? It's like mm-hmm. those doorways yeah. into that, the divine intensity, into the the kiss of the beloved in the moment yeah 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 and and a lot of that yes through the body but for me also through like buddhist tantra like you know literally mm. yeah. mm-hmm. so i think it's a similar i think that's why i resonated so much with your work because it feels like it's a melding of you know these sort of deeper awareness practices with also sort of really entering the moment mm. um, through mm. the body but also yeah. through just beingness yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. yeah. I'm. You know, it's an interesting. I keep having this curiosity, which. I mean, it's based on, to some degree, the somatic and trauma work that I do, and the intersection between the work that you're doing, because I, mm. I also feel like I sort of take people into these depths, but through different mediums but I also as I'm listening to you I'm like okay if like you know we were talking before about like if you can enter into the moment and yes there's a vulnerability um, and yes there's like there's such a deep receptivity that there's a safety that's created there and you know often I think through there's like a lot of different methods let's say through somatic work or trauma work that help people to feel more comfortable in their own being, Mm -hmm. you know, and feel safe in themselves so that they can feel safe in the world. And as I've been kind of listening to you and, and, um, and getting the transmission, it's like, I'm like, in this space, I feel like completely at home and relaxed, like in the space of, you know, I think your transmission and, and, I already have that inside of me. Like I can tap into that pretty quickly. 
But so it made me curious about the work that you're doing. And, you know, um, if you've seen that even just through the, the lens that you're t like, the way that you're taking people in that then they, they begin to have, even if they have trauma, or even if they have never felt safe in mm -hmm. their bodies or beings that they it's another way in, like it sort of mm. allows for a deeper uh, relaxation and coming home to self. I'm just curious what you've yeah. noticed in, in your right. experience and the women you've worked with. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is a direct answer to your question, but I do, I do feel pretty passionate about this point, which is that <clears throat> I don't think that spiritual work is complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think psychological therapy, yeah. trauma work is complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that they each need each other. They each address something very specific that the other can't touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, I think that people try to use them mm -hmm. interchangeably sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. I think that it's really important that we are getting, um, yeah, therapeutic support to work through these attachment woundings and, and traumas that we all carry. Mm -hmm. And that, that supports the spiritual work because in some ways we're creating a secure attachment with God. Yeah. Really, right? Mm -hmm. Source, creator, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and there are places that spiritual practice um, just goes so beyond yeah. our... Mm -hmm. psychological concepts and our knowing about, um, mm -hmm. you know, even somatic work that's very embodied, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel really clear about that. And I'm very clear uh, when I work with people that, that this should not be a replacement mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. that work, for like the work that you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, right? that, yeah, that was a great answer. <laughs> Thank you. That was... That was, I think I was, um, you know, I think I'm curious also how they can complement each other. And it does yeah. seem, I know in my own direct experience that both of them have been really important avenues in. Um, totally. And the more that I've cleared sort of through trauma and therapy and somatic work, the more mm -hmm. that I'm able to receive, you know, yeah. teachings, but also those can, those can feel limited from this kind of larger set, you know, larger divine self that we each, right. you know, that we each are, you know, yeah. it can be sort of, it can get too, like, uh, too focused. Mm. In some way. Yeah. In my experience, um, this the work that I do and going really deep into it, um, cleared a lot of the suffering patterns that I was carrying mm. and um, opened me into greater and greater suppleness, you yeah. know, suppleness with myself, suppleness with the moment, suppleness with life um, and to love, you know, just really to the experience of yeah. love, love for no reason, love okay. because it is. Um, mm -hmm. And what I found is that, if we can think of it as layers, it was like it got down to these layers, but then like down here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's different tools that are needed at like the, the trauma root. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Beautiful. I don't know what, what's your experience then with that personally? I've always done them side by side for mm -hmm. 20, probably like 20 plus years. Um, mm -hmm. And okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think like in the early days when my trauma was way more unprocessed. Um, mm -hmm. I think I felt so unsafe that it like to be even in a body and to I was so disconnected in my early days, like from emotions, um, because like, uh, just from from early childhood trauma and whatnot, that I think the more that I've been able to the more that I was able to clear in that regard, the more I was able to open kind of more to the totality mm. um, and sort of, yeah, feel safe in that ungrounded, you know, in the groundlessness or in, mm -hmm. in that not knowing, in the kind of 
you know, cross section of the moment. Um, I think that was probably more, I'm just, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to remember so many years ago, but I think that that was probably more of the journey that I, yeah, like it was maybe a little bit opposite to you that I had to actually kind of do some of the, the deeper somatic and, um, Mm -hmm. uh, trauma work and therapy in order to then be able to open more to the vastness and to really, mm -hmm. you know, enter into that cross section that's mm -hmm. happening in every moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a really important conversation, I think. And, um, I'm sure that you're into Reggie Ray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think that he talks about that as well, about the, mm -hmm. the importance of both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. kind of um, yeah. in incompletion of just having yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. I like. I'm. I'm appreciating though. I'm um, hearing that. You know. I think that then it for me. I'm. I, I'm just reflecting that when I, when I at a certain point in that healing, it's now I feel actually more connected to the work that you're doing, like mm. that actually takes me deeper. Um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so it, yep. that, that it's interesting that each of us have our own kind of journey with, right. Like, mm -hmm. like your journey may be like, okay, I en could enter in that way really deeply. And then I hit kind of a point where, okay, now I need, you know, maybe more mm -hmm. trauma healing or whatnot. Um, right. You maybe have I, the opposite. Yeah. So I think you're right. This is such a beautiful, important conversation because um, we're each on our own, you know, unfolding journeys and they can each take us to, you know, like all of the work is so important. And at different, I, I would just say at different points in my life, there's just been one work is more important than the other, you know? Uh -huh. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really important conversation because I think that I think that psychology and therapy has long tried to resolve the existential hungers of the human soul and yeah. failed. And I think spirituality has long tried to resolve the wounded human part of us yeah. and failed. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. You know, talk about polarities, like they each have their own mm -hmm you know, truth that's very true and very paradoxical to the other. And I think that we need, we need them both. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Beautifully said. To, to me, to me, the, the existential meaninglessness is such a symptom of our um, clenching up in a way and this like carrot on the stick that we chase and our our fixation on doing and our fixation on um, mm -hmm. control and our fixation on um thinking that we need to to try to be something or become something and this um the hollowness mm -hmm. that's like just at the at the edge of our experience that everyone's kind of like a little oh mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. we're trying to get away from it and mm -hmm. In my experience, the deep feminine is like the nectar, like just the, the water that we've been in the desert thirsting for um, mm. in that place. Mm -hmm. I do think that that's, um, I do think that that's the resolution to that, <clears throat> that deep existential angst, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that resonates for me. And also I think about that as like entering into the body and, the, you know, as well and the breath and the earth and, you know, cause it's mm -hmm. the, you know, it is the cross section of the, it's, it's like when you describe the doing or the outward, it's like, we're not, you know, we're kind of, we're out. We're like not, we're not experiencing the moment at all. We're not experiencing like the depth and the juiciness that's, our bodies, our awareness, the earth, you know, all of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, in my experience, dropping into the deep feminine is accessing a, a state of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a radical fulfillment because it's not 
reliant on what's going on on the surface. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The surface could be pain, it could be pleasure, it could be fucked up, it could mm-hmm. be what we want, it could be what we not don't want. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the impermanence, that's the groundlessness. But in the deep, there is this quality of unconditional fulfillment yeah. that actually is here just waiting to be mm-hmm. noticed and contacted and um, mm. a relationship developed with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure you experience this in your work, but I, I find so often I'm it's almost like I'm, I'm just like, hey, check it out. There's this other mm-hmm. world over here. Like, it's right there. <laughs> Do you want to come? <laughs> awesome. You know, it's like I'm not teaching you how to do anything. I'm just showing you. One of my students just called it a trap, <laughs> trap door. She's like, I feel like I just found a trap door. <laughs> it's always here. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is a trap door. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that fulfillment. Mm-hmm. Um, what else was I going to say? I don't remember, but yeah. Well, I love, I love this unconditional fulfillment and unconditional. I mean, this is such a huge part of my work as well is finding that place. And I think that that goes back to what you were talking about around the groundlessness, right? That we live in this impermanent world and things are what they are. And so even if, I want to, I can connect that back to power. Like, again, the true power is finding unconditional fulfillment in whatever is. Right. And then, you know, being like, being able to then move from that place because you've actually found unconditional acceptance of the moment. So there's also, I think there's also a deeper wisdom that then, and this might be more of than the masculine, you know, if we're talking in those terms can execute it but then there's a deeper wisdom of like oh this is the way forward like you were talking about in your own life you know that the more you drop into that the more that the power it's not this like ooh, i'm exerting all this power but it's like oh this is the thing like this is the poetry that comes out of me or this is the conversation i i that's perfect to have with this person you know that it's yeah it's it's coming from that deeper well that it really excites totally me. like that's I think that's me what's... too yeah let me let me tell you this whole experience of me just doing the online course has been a kind of a radical eye-opening hmm. like I'm like oh it actually does work to hmm. because I didn't I didn't I didn't engage any of that kind of like efforting, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have any kind of map or um, business training or marketing training or any of that um, because I just don't, I just don't. And to be honest, I felt like, well, this probably isn't really going to work, you know, like, like the feminine is great, but it doesn't apply to like the world, worldly (laughs) success. You know, and interestingly, what comes up for a lot of women when I teach this is they're afraid Mm -hmm. that if they really drop in and surrender and start to open their body and start to experience this exquisite quality of fullness and fulfillment, they're going to lose their worldly success. Mm -hmm. Because that's part of the program of the culture we live in, which is like, Mm -hmm. we're just going to become apathetic. Oh, I'll just do nothing. Who cares? Mm-hmm. And it's such a lie. It's such a lie. Mm-hmm. It's not true at all. It's it's part of our false doing program, right? That we have to we have to do from a place of insatiability. We have to do from a place of dissatisfaction. That if we're satisfied, we'll just give up. Mm-hmm. It's not true at all. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, again, coming from that fullness, doing becomes richly inspired, right, and creative. So again, back to what I was saying, Mm -hmm. my whole process of um, marketing for the course was so freaking feminine. Like I did everything from that deep well Mm -hmm. of what was alive Mm -hmm. for me in the moment, what was coming from my true soul. Mm -hmm to speak and say and share Mm -hmm. 
what was my kind of radical instinct and intuition in what to say and when to say it. Mm-hmm. A lot of not knowing, a lot of surrendering my body to the moment. And I have 109 women in this container with me. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, that's mm-hmm. wild, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and it, I wasn't expecting that at all. So there's something to be mm-hmm. said, I think, for mm-hmm. it's just made me kind of go, wow, okay, this is real. This actually does translate mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. into doing, into worldly success, into, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I think that's another big condition that we have is that we got to do it this other way yeah yeah I that comes from knowing right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was thinking as you were talking I'm like ooh, your next course could be about supporting women to kind of yeah move into whatever their creations are um totally I I resonate so deeply with what you're saying and it's really been kind of the journey that I've been on for the last year in terms of I don't even want to call it creating my business but it's like anything that isn't coming from that deep well like it's just right not only is it not fulfilling but it's also not working and yet you know I'm still in the process of you know like you're speaking of okay how does like how do I trust that you know because there is so much conditioning right and then even noticing the subtle moments where I'm not you know fully kind of landed in that what you're calling yeah. feminine right and then i access yeah. that place and just and then and it's just, like, like <laughs> yeah exactly and also, yeah. exactly so it's like yeah, it's totally. speaking to i'm like oh that's so beautiful and it's you know i've i've also spoken to several other women who have you know done it tried to do it in a masculine way and then been like that did not work like or that yeah. kind of outer it's like that didn't work for me that created dysfunction in my body that created, right. you know, tension. Um, right. Yeah. But I don't think, you know, to some, the reason I got, I'm excited about it also is because I don't, I don't know. I think there are women doing it. And like, I think women teaching from that place really excites me, you know, yeah. that, that how can we really be living our lives in that way? And that you just had this experience of, yeah. you know, no, it sounds like it's almost like you just, you were just imparted a deeper trust because you were like, I don't know if this is going to work. And then, you mm-hmm. know, created. I wasn't counting on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's been a, it's been an eye opener mm-hmm. for me for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. And again, there's something so beautiful about that, about, um, Oh gosh, that we, that we actually that when we drop and let go and surrender, there actually is something here to receive. There is something here to hold us. And we don't have to make it be so. It's already here waiting to be contacted. That's a a big one. You know, a lot of of people don't trust that that's the case. Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm Yeah, it gives me the chills and just of the 109 people that you're, you know, are in your course right now, because it's such, it is such a revolutionary thing. And so to then, you know, whatever, to whatever degree each woman is able to begin to tap into that, it's, it's like, that, yeah. that feels like changing, you know, the world, cool. like that's the, it's changing oneself, but it's really changing kind of our entire orientation yeah it's a global it's a global group too yeah which is pretty amazing oh. it's all over all over mm-hmm. the globe yeah mm-hmm. yeah and I think there's another piece that I want to say which which I'm really passionate about and, and we're just starting to get into it in the course which is that um we all know about the Madonna whore split mm-hmm. right which is this idea that as a woman you have to strive to be this Madonna, this perfect, virtuous, idealized woman. 
Um, and then we have the opposite of that, which is the whore, the degraded woman, the desirous woman, the sexual woman, uh, the Lilith, Lilith and Eve, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what I see in the world right now is that most of the movement around the divine feminine or the sacred feminine feminine rising whatever you know this kind of mm -hmm. global movement is it's still caught in that split mm -hmm. so on one side we have the very kind of like angelic etheric like the divine feminine and she's so soft and she's so gentle and we sort of go out here to contact her and then on the other side we have like the pussy movement of like the erotic like mm -hmm like claim your power, claim your sex, like, and they're incomplete without each other because the true deep feminine is the union of those polarities into what I call the true essence mm -hmm. of them, which is the, the rose and the flame is what I call them. Mm -hmm. The flame, which is true arrows, our embodiment, our, our passion to live, our passion and, and lust for life, our passion to really be here in the moment. And the, the rose being our, our capacity to love, our naked presence, pure presence, mm -hmm. without pretense. Mm -hmm. When those two come together, that's, mm -hmm. that's where I experience what I would really call the deep feminine. Mm -hmm. um, being in the viscera of life, being in mm. my somatic, surrendered, open bodied truth with love, with innocence. Mm. You know? So mm. that is something that I'm really, I really wanted to say here. I'm so. Because yeah. it really excites me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, yeah, yeah, it just excites say, me. I was just, just going to say thank you because even just for me mm. in that transmission. That's, I, I can completely, um, I feel like I've struggled so yes. much in yeah. bringing that union together, you know, like, and feeling, feeling that kind of fire and power that is actually always how I've been, but then also, you know, how to bring, how to mar marry that with, um, you know, more of the softness, more of the receptivity. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I'm hearing it to some degree. Mm -hmm. yeah well it gets confusing because we've all as women been indoctrinated into the split yeah and it's a very deep split mm -hmm. around um power innocence mm -hmm. eroticism mm -hmm. the sacred mm -hmm. eros and love and it plays all the way down to our experience of separation between our body and God, between the earth and yeah. the divine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how deep the split goes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very, it's very potent to unearth our relationship to the split and resurrect them into their true essence because there actually is a, a true essence inside each of those archetypes mm -hmm. um but it's it does it's not really anything that we've seen on the planet before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because yeah. we are so caught in the split yeah you know yeah or it's like if we want to be sacred or good Mm -hmm. We need to detach from density, from form, mm -hmm. from the body, mm -hmm. from eros. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, when I say eros, I don't just mean like sexy or I mean just mm -hmm. the, yeah. our passionate energy, right? Yeah. Our, our aliveness. Um, and then we think if we, if we, if we go into that energy, we need to leave behind our innocence and goodness and presence and just kind of like, oh, get yeah. lost in the mm -hmm. hedonistic, oh, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're so, <laughs> we're trying, we're trying mm -hmm. to figure it out, but it really is the union um, mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. very, very, very profound. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting too, because you're really speaking to like, 
I mean, everything you just spoke to is about non-duality. And I know in all of my practice and study over time, so many of the non-dual practices I was in, have been in, have been very male dominated as that kind of, um, right. to some extent, you know, you mentioned Reggie, I think his work brings in both, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know, it's this split <laughs> between you know, sort of this non, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's way out there. <laughs> yeah, spaciousness and the body and yeah. you know, the sort of juiciness of, yeah, like truly entering into form. And so, yes. um, but yet there's, non, there's a non-dual space within that form. And so, right. I mean, I think you're so, you're so, um, I think you're so right when you say that we really don't, there, there are not models of this in in at least I mean I can't think of really anyone to be honest yeah um yeah you know I think except for in this conversation with you that I'm yep. feeling that and I know that that was something that going through many years of different practices I always felt like I was always in my I, I made it a conflict in my mind I was always like I don't understand how these can all kind of go together right and so right. Right. I think it's really beautiful what your that your transmission and my experience is bringing all of it together and it is the feminine way you know so yeah it is mm -hmm. it is I mean mm -hmm. the, the essence of Tantra again is um, experiencing the radical beyond the beyond transcendent one mm -hmm. of the non-dual in the multitude of form and density and this yeah. viscera of existence yeah it's actually inside it's contained within mm -hmm. um, and 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 that's where we get to actually contact it in a way that's like mm -hmm. intimate mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we can go out and 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 contact it yeah. but it's mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is more like oh yeah yeah it's 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 the, uh, that yeah. intimacy that love making mm -hmm. and i think i feel to say here that there's something really precious to me about you know, this whole like deep feminine thing, Tantra, <laughs> which is that in many ways, it's so simple. It's not easy because mm -hmm. we're conditioned against it, mm -hmm. but it's simple in mm -hmm. that it's our birthright. It's actually our natural mm -hmm. way of being as humans. Mm -hmm. um, when we become supple in our bodies mm -hmm. and open and receptive, it's already right here, just like when I was saying that the bodies know how to make love. They've forgotten, but they know how. Mm -hmm. You know, they instinctively know how. Mm -hmm. um, the same goes with, with this experience of um, dropping into the, the, the nakedness of the moment and the, mm -hmm. the divine kissing density. It's already here when we become mm -hmm. supple, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, some, there's something about the simplicity that's yeah. really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a complex, like you've got to like mm -hmm. recite all these mantras for a billion years and like do all these, I mean, great, like do that if you want, but um, mm -hmm. this, is, this is a much more like primal mm -hmm. inner knowing and birthright that we have as human beings. Mm -hmm to drop into this deeper space um, mm -hmm. of surrendering and receiving ourselves in the moment mm -hmm. and being in the exquisite wisdom and fulfillment without needing to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, like, it makes me, this might be a good place to end. We could probably keep riffing for, maybe, yeah, we'll, forever. maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do this again because we seem to have a, <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> a beautiful co-creation together around this, yeah. this work. Um, but I was going to say, I think that's uh, such a, I mean, this is what I really am so grateful for your presence and for your poetry, because my feeling is, or, you know, my experience is that it's, you are a transmission of this that then allows women and, and men, you know, allows humans to experience that and yes it then has to be a practice that one keeps cultivating because we've learned how to do the opposite but totally. i think you know that like 
for anybody to be able to taste that nectar, you know, even for mm. a moment, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, yes, this is possible, you know? Yeah. Um, exactly. and, and like you're saying, like with any practice, with anything that we're trying to shift, in, you know, or I mean, I guess we could say shift or... Um, unlearn, undo. Unlearn, yeah, live into more. Yeah. It takes... It's like you said, this also, I feel like is against our culture, which I appreciate when you said like, it takes patience, you know, it takes time, it takes commitment. You know, it's a kind of like, I'm doing, I'm, I'm in this as a practice that then starts to shift my whole way of being. And it also, you know, interestingly, like the connection to shifting your neural pathways and, you know, like shifting the brain, shifting the body. So, yeah, mm-hmm. yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's like I was saying in the beginning, we'll bring it back full circle to close it. Like, yeah, for a while, I would experience, you know, I'd go out into my world, into the doing, into the clench, into the, and then mm-hmm. I'd come home and I'd do this whole feminine thing. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and over time, um, mm-hmm. I've developed more and more capacity to stay there um, or be there or drop in there. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, that is so exciting to me that I mean I feel like in my own process of that and just that that merging is so exciting yeah so fulfilling it is like yeah Yeah, it really is the divine union like Mm -hmm. how do we do our lives while also um Mm -hmm. receiving the moment Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. Another another course for you. Yeah, <laughs> totally. We we've we've birds a couple on this call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you so much for having me. It's such yeah. a, a joy to just mm. feel the resonance between mm. us and our mm. and our journeys and. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I can feel that there are uh, universes that we've both visited. Mm. That's sweet mm. to feel. Yeah. Yeah. For me as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd love for people to, um, I know you do have many followers on Facebook and for people to other than Facebook know how they can reach you, um, you know, see more of your poetry, more of your writings. And also, you know, if you, I know you're doing a course right now, but if you, have other courses or other ways of working with you one-on-one that Mm -hmm. you can share with people? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am doing a course right now called Holy Fire, Resurrecting the Deep Feminine. And um, I think, I think we're going to run it again, probably in the spring. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm kind of pregnant in creation mode right now in terms of what is next for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that there's going to be a a small group coaching that I'm going to do and offer to the women that are in the course right now, but um, I may or may not have, have spaces for one-on-one work coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can read my poetry and listen to my poetry album. If you go to the website called depraved and divine, Dot com. And you can find out about the Deep Feminine Mystery School at deepfemininemysteryschool.com. And there's also a free guided meditation that you can get um, from that website that is what I call the surrender process. It's the, the four gateways in the body to opening mm. into this um, mm. deep feminine space. Mm. Beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 So thank you everyone for tuning in. My name again is Lori Beth and um, I do this show weekly. So please continue to tune in. I've had some incredible people on the show with, like I said, like so many different topics um, from marketing to um, trying to think of to empowered relationships to, um, you know, like, stop manifesting and allow true freedom that was one of the (laughs) titles that was the first one it was awesome um and like i said at the beginning this show is really about uh it's not about transforming for the sake of getting what you want it's 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 a deeper transformation as we've been talking about today that's really about you know cutting into the cross-section of life and 
being more intimate with yourself and with life and feeling free um, to experience life as she comes. So, um, and mm. if you can, you can follow me on my page, um, as we've sort of discussed in here, I am a psychotherapist and a somatic and trauma healer. And um, I really, I mean, I would say that my body of work is really working with the, what I call the, the dark, more of the dark, deep feminine. And yet I, I come at it in a different way, which is through, I really help people enter their body and their felt experience. Um, I mean, that's similar to what Maya is doing, but um, it's more about really like going into the body and also clearing trauma through the body as well. Um, and often that leads to core attach to, to actually the healing of core attachment wounds. Um, mm. and, but yet I'm working with, I'm working with, and, oh, and I didn't <laughs> going all over the place now. Um, the heart of, I love working with women. So that's who I am mostly working with. Although I do do trauma healing containers with men as well. Um, all my work is one-on-one -on -one and, um, I, you know, the, the heart of my work is about being able to face courageously every sensation, emotion, experience that comes up for you so that you are more free and that you can actually be in your power and in your sovereignty. So mm. if you're interested in working with me, um, feel free to reach out and we will see, I will see you again next week. Okay. Mm. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you Lori. So much. Yeah. Bye. Bye.